All right, welcome back. So the topic for this presentation is going to be duty cycle. So there's a little bit of math that goes into duty cycle. It's not a whole lot. We don't need, well, we shouldn't need a calculator for it. But if you do need one, no worries. Uh, I understand not everyone's strong suit is math. I mean, I kind of sucked at math for a little while. Uh, but this does take a little bit of uh, getting used to, takes a little bit of practice. But duty cycle is something that we need to be aware of when we're using our welding machines. And the little graph here, if you don't know what duty cycle is, then you're probably not going to be able to make any sense of it at all. But don't worry, I'm about to go into detail. So what is duty cycle? Basically, duty cycle tells us how long we can use a welding machine before we have to completely stop what we're doing and let it cool off. So in the meantime, while the machine is cooling off, you can go ahead and chip whatever wells you need to, brush material off, clean your material, do anything you need to do while the machine is cooling off. Uh, we basically just need to stop using the machine and allow it to cool off by itself. So here's a picture of someone who's welding. And so this is an engine driven machine. So this applies to all welding machines, period. Whether it's something that's gas driven, whether it's something that's more conventional, like a, a transformer rectifier welding machine, uh, and especially inverter machines. So duty cycle applies to any welding machine that you'll come across uh, whether it's, you know, at your at your buddy's garage or a full size uh, production shop. So when we're talking about duty cycle, we need to start thinking that duty cycle consists of a certain period of time. And so it basically starts when you first establish your welding arc and to the point where you're done welding. And this time frame always consists of a 10 minute window. So 10 minutes from the time you start welding to the time you stop, or basically to the time that the uh, welding machine is ready to be used again, it's gonna be a 10 minute window. So where do we find duty cycle? Cause I'll admit, duty cycle isn't always labeled on the welding machine and over time, uh, the more you use welding machines, move them around, uh, they get bumped into with things. Sometimes labels get scratched off or they get smudged, they get dirty, and eventually you can't read them anymore. So the, the place where you can always look up the duty cycle is in the owner's manual. And if for some reason you lost it, uh, you can't find it, your dog ate it, whatever, you can always go to the manufacturer's website look up the specific model of welding machine that you have, and you'll be able to find that information on the website. Now, often every welding machine has multiple duty cycles. It, it really depends on what you're doing. And every duty cycle varies on how much power you're using while you're welding. So if we're using a constant current welding uh, machine, then the duty cycle is going to be based on the amount of amps that we're using for our weld. And I should point out that every machine is different. Um, if they're the same model, then their duty cycles should be the same. But let's say you have a welding machine from Miller, you have a welding machine from Lincoln, and you have a welding machine from, say, ESOB. They could all be roughly the same size, but their duty cycles are going to be different. So that's one thing we need to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and just jump right into an example so that way this all starts to make sense for you. Let's say we have a welding machine in the shop and you're going to start using it. As you're playing around with it, you notice that the machine can go up to 150 amps. However, looking at the duty cycle, you find that the maximum duties or the maximum output for this duty cycle, the first one listed is 100 amps. And it states that the duty cycle is 60% for that 100 amps. So what exactly does this mean? How do we how do we figure out how long we can use it before letting it cool off? So duty cycle 
knowing the concept of duty cycle, we should already start to think that if we have this machine set to 100 amps, although it can go as high as 150, because there is a duty cycle, we should know that we cannot weld at 100, uh, 100 amps indefinitely. I mean, sure you could, but because there's a duty cycle, you're more than likely going to uh, damage and kill your welding machine. So again, let's recap. The duty cycle states 60% at 100 amps. Now, if we remember that for duty cycle, it consists of a 10 minute window, it's going to make everything fall into place. So 60% of that 10 minute window is six minutes. So basically what that's telling us is that if we were to set our machine to 100 amps, we can weld for six minutes nonstop. Assuming you have a welding electrode that is long enough to, uh, to, to make it to six minutes, or if you're really fast at changing your electrodes out uh, in between welds, you can weld for six minutes nonstop at 100 amps. Once you meet or once you hit six minutes, you have to stop welding with this particular machine and allow it the rest of that 10 minute window to cool off. So because we're working with a 10 minute window and we're at 60%, six minutes subtracted from 10 is four. So we have to give that welding machine four minutes to cool off by itself. If you think, well, maybe I can you know, place a couple fans against uh, the welding machine and that'll help it cool down faster, uh, that would be incorrect. While you can do so, you must wait those four minutes to allow the machine to properly cool off before you can start welding again. So let's start with a, another example. Let's say the same machine that you can crank all the way up to 150 amps shows that there's another duty cycle on that machine. It says that you can have a, a duty cycle of 80% if you're welding at 75 amps. So what does this mean? Well, let's think back. Duty cycle consists of a 10 minute window, right? So if we set the machine to 75 amps, an 80% 80, uh, 80 duty cycle means that we can weld nonstop at 75 amps for eight minutes. Once we hit those eight minutes, we have to allow the machine to cool down for the rest of that 10 minute cycle. So if we can weld for eight minutes nonstop, we have to give the machine two minutes to cool off before we can start welding again. All right, so you, sh you should uh, start noticing a pattern. Now let's go with the third and final example. The same machine that you can crank up to 150 amps has another duty cycle listed and it tells you that if you do want to crank this up to 150 amps, you can do so at a 10% duty cycle. So again, duty cycle consists of a 10 minute period. And so if you wanted to weld at 150 amps, let's say you're welding something that's really thick and you really need to penetrate, you know, from one side of the metal plate to the other, and you need that extra heat in order to melt the metal, you can do so, but at 10% of the 10 minute time frame. So for 150 amps, you can weld for one minute or 10% of that 10 minute time frame. And so that means that after welding for one minute nonstop at 150 amps, you must wait nine minutes for that welding machine to cool off before you can start welding again at 150 amps. Now, these are just made up numbers. Uh, although they are pretty realistic for welding machines that you'll find out there in industry, make sure that you take the time to find out the duty cycle for the welding machine that you're working with because you are going to encounter welding machines that actually don't have a duty cycle that you can weld at whatever amount of amperage you want non-stop 
Now this could be cut or this could be due to the fact that they have um, a cooling machine that's uh, helping the machine to cool off at all times. Or it could be because the machine is so big that it can just handle that power and just, you know, cool off on its own while you're welding and you don't need to stop in order for it to cool off. But you should never assume, never assume what the duty cycle is. If you're ever unsure, ask somebody. It's always better to ask questions than to just take the chance and cause damage to the equipment that we're working with. And so, with that being said, this is Duty Cycle. And if you're still unsure about it, feel free to reach out. Ask me a question. I'll do the best that I can to help you better understand this concept. If you think you've got it down, then I'll see you in the next module, or in the next section.